Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, another week has come and gone. And you know what that means, listeners. Another incredible Real Film Nerds Podcast. This week, episode number 363, one of the, my most anticipated films of the past year, Dune Part 2. With me, as always, my uh, hearkening to my Fremen, Mysterious Mike Talent. Oh, man. Look at you uh, relating the movie to, to this pod. That's pretty are cool. You, or are you Atreides? I don't know, And I'm man. hearkening. I don't know. You're probably right. I'm probably hearkening. I'm probably the darker side. The evil, more fucked up, ugly ones. Definitely the ugly ones. The ugly Mike's ones. the pretty one. Ah, yes, I'm the pretty one. Gotcha. He's like Jason Mimosa, even though Mimosa died in the first one. He did die in the first one. Spoilers, by the way. For the first one. The first one's been out for like three years. It's fine. It has been out for quite a while. Yeah. Dude, it was still, like, we were still, like, doing pandemic-y things. Yeah, it was, like, during the start of the pandemic. Yeah. I I don't remember the exact year. Was it 19 or 20? Dude, it's 21, but... Was it 21? Yeah. Shit. Well... (laughs) Almost, if I would have <laughs> counted another year. <laughs> well, all right, Mike. This this week, let's do it. Dune Part 2. Uh, unless you have any more introductory stuff, go ahead and give us the breakdown. No, no, I think I'm good, man. I'll go to the breakdown. Here we go. So this movie was directed by Denis Villeneuve. Uh, Villeneuve? Is that how you say it? Yeah, Dude, so I've heard a lot of people change his name or at least how he likes it pronounced so i have always pronounced it dennis villeneuve but now i keep hearing people and reviewers and shit pronounce it dene villeneuve villeneuve or something like that i don't fucking know mike just say it however you want because everybody's saying it different okay (laughs) dennis villeneuve uh so uh it was written by dennis villeneuve uh john uh Spatis and Frank uh Herbert was the who who wrote the original Dune. And this movie starring uh Timothy Chalamet, uh Zen- Zendaya, uh Rebecca Ferguson, Javier uh Bardem, uh Josh Brolin, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Dave Batista, Christopher Walken. And this movie is about Paul Atreides unites with uh, Shania. Oh man, I'm gonna mess that name. Sh- uh, yeah, uh, Work through it. You can do it. China, China, China. Chi- no, I don't know. Chi- no, it is not China. China. I don't, dude. I don't know. How I do I say that? I think it's Chinese. Chinese. In the uh, in the. Freeman, while sinking revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family. Man, I really messed that one up. That yeah, was dude, bad. this is going to be a rough one as far as names, I can tell. Yeah, this one's Freeman? Fr- Not free, there's only one E. Oh, Freeman, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know, the movie was only three hours long. With both of them, it's only six hours long. I mean, that's not enough time for you to remember how to pronounce it, Mike. I got it. Yeah, no. Hey, man, I was impressed. I was able to sit through the whole thing without having to get up to pee. But boy, did I have to go. But man, I, I held it. Dude, that makes two of us. I really had to pee pretty bad, but I downed that whole, you know, Harkins drink. So, um, bigger question, Mike. Did you watch part one before going to the theaters and watching part two? I didn't get a chance. I wanted to do it. I did. I sucked it up. I fell asleep, though. But I woke <laughs> up and completed it. Oh, dude, I'm tired. But on Wednesday, I watched Dune Part 1, awesome. and then I watched Part 2 on Thursday, and wow. Yeah, no, no, I mean, so good. Uh, I I think I didn't realize there was going to be so, more, so many more, at least. Like, you had mentioned on the last pod, Matt, that you said there could be like up to six or something. Yes, this could be a continuing film for a while. So um, I don't know the novels. Mike, did you ever read the original novel? I did not. I I think it would be something I would like to read, but I just, you know, when when I can find time. 
So Dune Part 1 and Part 2, as far as I know, is Frank Herbert's original novel. Now, this is not the first adaptation of his book. There's been multiple adaptations. Mike, have you seen any of them? Uh, Yeah, I think so, actually. So the first adaptation came out in 1984. Yeah, I think I've seen that one, actually. And that one is less than either one of these. It was two hours and 15 minutes, but it is the complete first book, at least in however the director slash writer decide, writers decided to do it. Then in the year 2000, there was a miniseries called Dune. And then in 2004, uh, Sci-Fi did, I believe, another miniseries oh, okay. called Children of Dune. All right. And then in 2013, there was Joe... Jo- Dor, ugh. See, I'm as bad as you are at pronouncing names sometimes. Oh, Jordowski's no Dune. Okay. Jordowski's Dune. Yes. Got it. And then in Dune, then in 2021, the original Dune, or not the original Dune, Dune Part 1, and then in 2024, Dune Part 3. Part 3. Part 2. Part 2. Fuck, my head is getting ahead of what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, we know that part one and part two, I believe, are, is Frank Herbert's original novel. I think they're probably going to have a part three. Uh, what it is, I don't know. But Frank Herbert wrote, wrote the original book, and this is a large series of books from my understanding. I have not read them. I'm not sure how many there are, but there are definitely more than just Frank Herbert's original book. So this could be a franchise where we get a film possibly every two to three or four years, which I'm up for it. If it's done as well as Dennis Villeneuve did his first two, I'm down for it. Yeah. Dennis uh, Villeneuve uh, definitely has just, I don't know. I think I've been a huge fan of his since Arrival, Matt. And it's just, I don't know. He's just really visual. And this movie was like amazing, you know, like, it was good i you know even though it was long um it didn't feel really that long i mean i guess there's a few parts maybe that it was a little bit slow but not not too much i felt like there was a lot of stuff going on well i'm kind of disappointed that you've only been a fan of his since arrival because i've been a fan since prisoners see uh i don't think i've seen that matt oh 2013 prisoners we might have to do that one for the pod then but yeah, 2013 is Prisoners, Sicario was 2015, Arrival was 2016, uh, Blade Runner 2049 was 2017, Dune 2021, and then Dune Part 2 2024. He yeah. hasn't directed a whole lot of films, but the stuff he has directed is amazing. Yeah, uh, I forgot he did Sicario too. That was a great movie, the oh, first one. Loved it. Yeah, loved the original the Sicario. One. Second one was kind of a letdown, but... Yes. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed uh, some of the new characters. And I don't know. It was it was another good one, man. Um, it was it was fun to, to watch it. Uh, my only like little bit of worry, but apparently it's it hasn't been much of a worry was I didn't think the theater was busy enough. For well, when you... I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, when I saw it, I saw it on uh, because I had some family in town and stuff, so I couldn't go on my normal Thursday night. I saw it on Saturday night at like prime time, and the theater was not full, and that was disappointing for me. Well, dude, I have not been in a full th- theater in a very long time, but I went on opening night on Thursday. And the theater wasn't full, but there was a lot more people in that theater than there typically is on a Thursday night in Prescott. And I was very happy with that. But, Mike, do you know what the numbers are? Because I do. Uh, I think it was like 80. Is it 85 for the weekend? So the U.S. did 81.5. Okay, 81.5. Yeah. Globally, 160. 160. Okay. All right. So globally, it's it's doing good. Like, I it, mean... 
all together. Domestic isn't bad at all either. I mean, 80, 81 and a half for a three hour long hardcore sci-fi film. That's pretty gosh darn good in my book. Well, you know, I was just thinking like, how do you afford this cast? You got to have like 600 million. Well, do you know what the budget was for this film, Mike? Uh, I would say somewhere around 150 to 200. 200 million? Yeah. Okay, so they're still, you know, not in the black yet. Well, I mean, I don't know what the official budget. I'm just guessing. Oh, well, I was gonna, that's what I was asking. Do you know? I mean, have, have you seen it? Or do they not report it really this early on? They usually don't ever say, honestly. It's just people sometimes, people that know uh, will leak, like oh. a, a range. Yeah, estimated budget according to the IMDAs, that's IMDB, estimated budget on IMDB is $190 million. So oh, okay. I was they close. still got a ways to go to break even. Yeah, I mean, they for sure will with, with that kind of... Uh, with that kind of money, I think they, they will just in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know how much profit they'll make, but it sounds like they're, they're happy with the, the results. Um, this had a better opening than the first one, but the first one was streaming on HBO Max at the same time. And I guess people didn't go to the theater to watch it. Really? Because I remember seeing it in the theaters. I don't remember it being on HBO Max, but I'm not surprised because during COVID they did that. Well, yeah, so, Matt, all of the movies that uh, Warner Brothers, I think, made in 21 were all released simultaneously. Remember, it was kind of an experiment? Right, yeah. Yeah, and some of the, the movie houses are still doing it. I don't think you, Warner Brothers is, though. Well, obviously not with this film. Yeah, I I mean, it was it was kind of a risky move. They wanted to see how things would went. And uh, I think they decided to go back towards a more traditional release in the theaters. But the window from the theaters to the streaming to the release on digital, like for renting and stuff, has gotten super short. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we're experiencing that already. American Fiction, I purchased it so that we could review it. And it came out technically in December. Next week, week's film, which we will discuss later, I just purchased that so, you know, I can watch it. And that, I don't even know if that really was in the theaters here. Granted, it's an indie, so it's a little different. But but still, it has not spent much time in the theaters at all. Maybe a month, and it's already out on digital. Yeah, the um, Matt, the uh, we watched Napoleon in the theaters. It's already streaming on uh, Apple TV. Just started this last weekend. Yeah, well, oh, dude, you want to know one them that's really wild to me? Um, talking about Best Picture nominees, because, you know, uh, we were doing that uh, last week, American Fiction. Yeah. Uh, Poor Things is on Hulu. Already, dude? Already. They just released it on Hulu this weekend. Wow. Yep. Now, they gave it like three weeks to buy on digital, I think two or three weeks, to buy or rent on digital at 20 bucks. Now it's on Hulu. So now you can go watch it. Um, I will caution people. I don't know if I talked about it on the podcast or not. I talked about it on the radio. Um, Poor Things is not for the faint of heart. Uh, personally, I did not like that film. I don't know if we're going to review it on the podcast. I don't think we'll get to it. But in case we do, I'm not going to talk too much about it. But there is not only a shit ton of nudity, which I'm not arguing against. There is a <laughs> shit ton of sex. And it, when you think about it, conceptually and what's going on it's kind of disgusting so i uh, will leave it at that gotcha gotcha all, all right um man i'm probably gonna watch it just to know what it is and then just be disgusted like you it'll be Dude, great we can uh, everything everything about that film is absolutely incredible the acting is out of this world the cinematography the sets the outfit everything in that film is absolutely perfect the story is awful absolutely awful i just could not wrap my head around the story everything else is fantastic and i i don't want to give my rating but the story is a major major factor for me yeah 
Anyway, so, so we're not here to talk about poor things or best pictures, but I'm just saying it's out. It, it's an interesting conversation about streaming. Don't stream Dune 2. Go see it in the theaters, man. This film is beautiful, to put it mildly. Oh, man, yeah. Definitely see this in the theater. Um, I guess, Matt, I'll, I'll, I'll start us off on uh, the uh, our, our segment, Matt. Uh, what are you drinking this fine morning, evening, afternoon? Uh, well, Mike, thank you for asking. Uh, I just grabbed a beer out of the fridge since uh, I've been drinking Michelob Ultras and Captain and Cokes and all those things on my uh, conference, not vacation in Laughlin, although I did drink a lot of beers. But, Mike, I'm drinking another one of those uh, 1912s. Um, oh, crap. I just had it in my head. Uh, check. Dang. Dang it. I got to pull it out of the big koozie. FYI, Eric, if you're listening, I'm drinking it out of a liquid death koozie. <laughs> 1912 weapons check. It's the they're red, and ah, it is yes. a very good beer. And I've already almost finished it, and it's a uh, tall boy. So that tells you any indication how much I like this beer. Awesome, awesome, man. I am drinking another one of those uh, high lies from Cigar City, the IPA. Still got a few left in the fridge, so drinking those. Well, all right, Mike, let's just get moving on because I want to talk about this movie some more. We don't have a whole lot podcast left, so we need to get on it. So, right. Mike, um, what is this week's timely and topical dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. Dude, I think you're going to like this one. All is right. it about worms? <sighs> of course it's about worms, Matt. How else am I going to do anything? That's what I thought. All right, all right. Why did the sandworm enroll in cooking school? Hmm. Because he wanted something else to eat? Because he wanted to learn how to spice up its life. <laughs> Dude, that was actually a pretty good timely joke. That's really good for this movie. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's not bad, right? Did no, I? that's really good for this movie. It's <laughs> it's a dad joke to the max, but that was pretty good. I will give you it. It's very timely for this. All right. Matt gave me props. Remember that. Write it down. Write it down. Episode number 363. 363. That's right, Matt. Mike gets props for his awful dad jokes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'll be the first and the last time he does that, everybody. No, 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 I'm not that cruel. I'm cruel, but not that cruel. So speaking about uh, things that are super easy and not cruel, because there's multiple ones in the main characters, Mike. Let's see how many of them you name. Mike, how does Dune Part 2 relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? <laughs> All right, Matt. So this is super easy because this movie has tons of actors who are in Marvel Cinematic Universe. But I'm going to name one that is new to the the movie series, and that is Florence Pugh, who was in the uh, in Black Widow as Yelena uh, Belova. So um, I just thought I would do a new one. Of course, there's Dave Bautista and. And Josh Brolin and and uh, yeah, there's three Drax. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. There's there's just tons of them. There's tons of them. Dave Bautista. Yeah, you um, got that right. You said that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Josh uh, Brolin is Thanos. Zendaya, yeah. who's who's Zendaya. in the, who's in the Spider Man series. So, like Mary it, it, Jane. Yep. Yeah. There's there's tons of them. So, but I wanted to try and do a different one from last time's podcast because. I listened to last time's podcast, Matt. Did you? Was it, was it because you were trying to figure out what, how many reels you gave part one? Because I wrote mine down. Oh, yeah. You're good. Dude, that's why I use Letterboxd, man. I, they don't pay me to promote that, that service, but I use Letterboxd because I can look back and see exactly what I rated it. All I got to do is pull up the film, and it says right there what I rated it. It's nice, dude. Okay, so we'll start there. Um, Mike... I had no fucking clue Christopher Walken 
or uh, Florence Pugh were in this film. And I remembered the talk of Austin Butler being in the film, but I did not realize the character he was going to play, which was fucking amazing. Finally, Austin Butler does a role that he does not sound like fucking Elvis. Like, I don't want to shame the guy. That's just how he talks. Like, legit. That's how he talks. If you ever hear any of his interviews, he legitimately talks almost like Elvis as a normal human being. So he was perfect for Elvis. But if you watch Masters of the, of the Air, which I love, and I think we talked about it, that that's what I got in October to, you know, review way back then. Yeah. Anyways, um, he sounds like freaking Elvis the whole time in Masters of the Air. Now, it's fine. I'm okay with it, but I don't think people from Wyoming sound like Elvis, but I could be wrong. Okay. All right. All right. I'd... But anyways, um, Austin Butler was one of my favorite actors slash characters in this film. It wasn't a huge part, but it was a very important part, and he did such a good job, dude. I was shocked. It was so good. It was really good, dude. It was really good. This was another great movie i don't know just visually all kinds of stuff man this is it was very entertaining this is this is the sci-fi that we love to watch this, this is my jam by far but i mean i don't want to say that austin butler has done a bad job before he does a fantastic job in masters of the air he did a fantastic job in elvis but this role is so different than either one of those and he's a villain, spoilers, but he's a villain villain in this one. And he is just on fucking point, dude. He is a creepy ass, awful villain in this movie, and he nailed it. Nailed yeah, dude. It. He was he was awesome. He was awesome yeah. as a bad guy. Yep. I think the only person other than obviously Timothy Chalamet, who was phenomenal in the first one, and Zendaya, who was absolutely fantastic in the first one as well. The the one I'm going to give a big, big, big shout out to that was probably my favorite character slash performance in the film other than those two, Javier Bardem. Oh, yeah, dude. His character was fun. Stilgar? Oh, my God, dude. That character was so awesome in this movie. So good. Yeah, he was good. He was a great character. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a very interesting movie. It was good. You know, like the different... The different kind of storylines that are going on between, uh, you know, Timothy Chalamet's character and Rebecca Ferguson's character and, like, just all the kind of stuff that's happening. And, yeah, it was cool. It was a really cool movie. There's a lot going on, and I think it all just did fantastic. You're not confused it it weaves it around through everything. You got a bit of a love story. Well, you have quite a bit of a love story, actually. You got villains. You got, you know, the Game of Thrones kind of thing with the houses that control. You got the emperor that's trying to hold on to his control, which, by the way, Christopher Walken, I love you to death, dude, but it might be time to retire. I mean, Jesus, I don't even think he could really stand up through most of this film. I mean, he's an old dude now. Love him to death, though. He's one of my favorite actors. He, he he is he he's he's getting old, dude. But hey, had... was it just me, or did you feel bad for Dave Bautista's character? Uh, I did feel bad, man. He kind of just got like pooped on, and 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 just yeah, he just kind of looked like a wimp. Yeah, he got the shaft. He's this big badass motherfucker, but he's trying to keep this planet in check and keep them making spice and making money and all that shit while these rogue basically terrorists are running around blowing everything up and he can only do so much and they're lumping everything on him yeah and he was trying to he, he even like the scene where they you know they they kind of had a he goes down there to take charge front line and they just got their asses handed to him he was like like that was the turning point where it's like he probably realized that this was too much for him. But what are you gonna do? He can't just say, "Oh, I'm I'm not gonna do this anymore." But he got you know he got demoted. Yeah, his uncle put him in charge, and he just either he wasn't a great military mind or he wasn't aggressive enough or what. But he was not doing his job, and he got replaced, and felt bad for the guy. 
but it is what it is. It adds to the story because you bring in someone that is on a whole nother level of cruelty. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, literally, Austin Butler's, Butler's character was killing people, and then he would feed them to basically his wenches. Like, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, no, no, he was he was hardcore, man. You're not kidding. So, Mike, okay, let me ask this, uh, although I think you're looking something up in your phone because I can see you. But, uh, uh, no, no, I'm good. Mike, let me ask you this. I don't want to compare the two because they're kind of one and the same, but they're not. Do you remember how many reels you gave Dune Part 1, the original Dune? Or not the original Dune, but the original Dune of this series? Uh, no, I do not. So I remember, because I looked it up, I gave it <laughs> four, four and a half reels. Yeah. So do you think this one is better, the same, or worse than Part 1? Ooh, ooh. Um, I kind of think I like this one better, which is weird because it's the second one. Yep. So I like to say that I think this series, at least to date, has the uh, Terminator syndrome. Oh, okay. Terminator 2 is so much better than the original. I love the original Terminator. But the second one is leaps and bounds above it. Now on this, I don't think it's leaps and bounds above it. I think they are definitely work together. And having a marathon watching them both together, if you can do it, would be awesome. But Mike, I, I think Dune Part 2 is my favorite of the two. Yeah, it's pretty rare, Matt, to find a second movie that's better than the first. Yes, it's long. Both of them are very long. They're both almost three hours, but it did not feel like three hours to me. I was enthralled the entire time. I loved it. Even the slow parts where they're building, uh, I I really, really like this film. Um, I think this one, in some ways, how it's better, one of the ways it's better, is that we got introduced to everything and what's going on and who the Fremen are and who the Harkonnens are and you know, who uh, Paul Atreides is and who all these people are. We get introduced in the world and all that building's going on in the first one. This one is where they kicked open the floodgates and they could really just go to town with the story and telling everything going on. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think it was a lot of introductions and like um, origin kind of stuff in the first one. And then this one's just like, okay, they already know all that. Let's get it going. Yeah, and from my understanding, that's how the book is. Like, um, uh, Dene Villeneuve or Venoua or wh- however the fuck his name is, um, he specifically tried to adhere to the book as best as he could. He's a huge fan of the book. He's a huge fan of this, you can tell. And he has committed to the first two. I have not heard if he's committed to a third film. I hope so. I hope they do a trilogy and then just maybe leave it alone or do one every you know four years or something with someone else. But I, I could see this going on for a while. I mean, it's a really fun world. If they can get a killer cast like this again, I mean, keep it going, man. Although I'm a giant nerd for this kind of stuff, so I don't know. Mike, thoughts? Dude, I yeah, I, I want to keep it going. I was, you know, when this ends, I was like, I wanted more. So it's like, I, I don't know. Like, I was like, oh, we could go more. Let's Let's find out what's going to happen now. Because it's like it just kind of leads on to another kind of big um, story arc, you know? So I I, I wanted to see see more. I 100% agree. I I want more. I want at least a third movie. At least a third. I want at least a trilogy. A nice box set will look good on the shelf. (laughs) But, Mike, dude, we have to talk about it. Just a little bit. I know we're running against time and you're looking at your clock and you're like, man, I got to go to bed. I'm so tired because I'm so old. But you got me going, dude. And now I'm wide awake and now I'm ready to roll. Okay. Um, Dude, how badass are those sandworms? And the fact that they're riding them, they're using them to travel around the planet. That's freaking awesome. Dude, that is awesome. What a a great way to travel, man. Like, and, and like... I enjoyed that that was like one of the, I guess, capstones of, of like becoming a, uh, a Freeman. 
Fremen. Yeah. Fremen. Fremen. Like that was like, if you could do that, you're, you know, everything, you know, everything that they have, like, and how, how they are and all that stuff. And it was really cool. Like I thought, I thought that whole sequence of, uh, um, our, our main character kind of joining this, uh, like, different group of people and learning their ways and kind of just, I don't know, uh, building his myth in one way too. And, and just, it was interesting, man. Well, and Mike, the sandworm that he rode or drove or whatever you want to call it, right. I guess. Right. Was like, was like a, um, a grandfather ancient sandworm or something. Yeah. It was a big one. That's why everyone was freaking out when it showed up because it's the biggest sandworm anyone has ever seen. And not only did he ride it, he rode it like a fucking boss. And so that's added to his myth of being their leader, you know? Yeah, and it was interesting. He kept denying it. He's like, ah, ah. And then kind of that, 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 yeah, anyway. I don't Do you wanna... think that was kind of a ploy between him and his mom that he just kept denying it and his mom kept pushing it? Or do you think he truly was just like, no, no, leave me the hell alone? And his mom's like, no, I'm going to make this motherfucker control the galaxy kind of thing. I think it was, I think it was him. He honestly didn't believe he was. And uh, it wasn't until later on in the story that like things actually came together. So I think he was truly not trying to build himself up, but it ended up working towards his advantage. So I got one more. I don't, I'd probably have to look it up, but do you think the sandworms from Beetlejuice are inspired by Dune? Like they have to be, right? Dude, they probably are. Yeah, they have to be because that, that shit's awesome too. Not as awesome as these sandworms. These sandworms were badass. Yeah, no, these sandworms are badass for sure. Okay, so let me see. There was something else I wanted to discuss. Oh, that's right. Mike, what was like the most shocking moment to you in the entire film? Because I have one and people were like audibly like gasping in the theater uh let's see shocking moment in the theater yeah yeah do you did anything stick out more than others to you um man i'm trying to think anything stick out uh this is called dead air mike (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah yeah I, I know i'm I, okay i'm thinking i'm thinking he's trying to think it's hurting his brain he's too old and he's too tired i think i think when the our main character's mom uh showed up with all the tats mm, maybe i mean that was pretty cool when she was the reverend mother and she's all tatted up but no i'm talking about the end after uh uh paul atreides uh kills uh austin butler's character and then he says he wants to take the emperor's daughter hand in marriage. That was a big shocker. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I he, saw it coming though. But it, everybody was like, "Oh my god!" Because they spent the whole film building up this relationship between Zendaya and T- Timothy Chalamet, and he goes and he's like, "Nope, I'm gonna go marry this bitch because I want to rule everything." Yeah. I think that was part of his um, power move stuff like that he was talking about in the movie where he's trying to, there's a lot of ways we don't win, but there's only a couple that we do. Oh yeah, dude, totally. That, well, that's why I was bringing it up, but I still like people in the theaters were pretty shocked that, cause that's not how it usually goes. Usually you go with the, the, your heart, not your, you know, control the of a galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. the 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 interesting thing about that move too is like he he told her right before that he announced that that you know he's he would love her forever. It's like he totally knew he was going to do that, and it really you know. Well, I was I was wondering if he did that because he was going up against Austin Butler and was afraid he was probably going to die. No, I I you don't think, think so? it was. I think it's because he knew the outcome would be. I don't know if he knew that Austin Butler was going to be as good as he was, but he uh, he definitely knew that he was going to try and do that other thing because that was the only way to to the 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 correct path to to win. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, and that fight scene was 
something else. That was super well choreographed and shot, and the whole movie is just gorgeous. It really is. I mean, I don't know if you can get any better than this. It was it was really really uh, really nice. Matt, what did you think of the uh, what do they call it? The lifeblood or the the blue stuff? But what what did they call it? They had something like a name for it. Yeah, the worm piss. Yeah. The- <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and and how does that compare to the blue milk? Uh, well, blue milk isn't poisonous, as far as I know, <laughs> and the worm piss or venom or blood or whatever it was clearly is because it basically killed Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I- it, even though it looked like a blue icy, <laughs> a melted blue icy, don't drink it. Actually, it looked more like Windex. Kind of like yeah, it kind of looked like like um, radiator fluid, but blue. Yeah, blue radiator fluid, Windex. Uh, yeah, it's just no, it's not healthy for you, Mike. Not healthy for you at all. Okay, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt uh, what else? What else should we be talk about? Matt. Well, I don't know, Mike, because I mean, I can sit here and talk all day about this film. This film is amazing, but. You know, as I keep pointing out, you know, you're slowly nodding off. So why didn't I ask you how many reels you give Dune Part 2, Mike? All right. All right, Matt. So I think this is going to be one of those rare, rare ones, Matt. Five, five reels, Matt. Five reels. Mike, I hate to say it without a doubt. This is five out of five all fucking day long. This is a must-see film. And if you can do it, you need to watch part one before you see part two. It, You don't have to, but it helps flesh out the story a lot more, especially if you haven't seen it. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch one again. I know it would build on it, but, uh, man, this movie was awesome. Yeah, but you've seen part one before. I'm just saying those of you that haven't seen it at all definitely need to go see it at least at least once. Oh, but yeah, I, for sure. I mean, dude, seriously, I think watch it one day before you go to the theaters or something, or same day, or I don't know, up to you, but definitely watch it before, because it, I think that helped my viewing of it a lot, because it was like a refresher, and I loved it. I loved it so much. It's This is an insta-buy when it comes out on Blu-ray for me. All right. Well. So, you want to talk about next week's film, Mike? Uh, yeah, sure. We we can. Okay, so what are we going to review next week, Mike? We are going to review one, another Oscar-nominated movie, which uh, the name is escaping me, Matt. Okay, I got you, Mike. See, I pull all this up on my computer. But uh, so next week we're going to continue our Best Picture nominee catch-up. Uh, we've hit, at least I've hit almost all of them. This is one of three that I am missing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be watching one of them just because it's a love story and it's not really my thing. But uh, this one we will be chatting about next week. Uh, I think, it, yeah, this podcast will come out after the Academy Awards, so we'll let you know if it wins or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, you know, we're getting there. Yeah, the Academy Awards are next Sunday on uh, March 10th. But uh, we're going to check out the film The Zone of Interest. And like I said before, I teased a little bit. This is more of like an independent kind of film. I believe it's British, but it is 100% in German because it is based around the Holocaust, specifically Auschwitz. Mm. Okay. So this is going to be a hard watch. Uh, I think it was a hard watch for my mom because she's already watched it. But uh, uh, I think it's going to be poignant, uh, very well done, but not in the way like Dune is where it's a celebration. This is more of, you know, don't forget that this shit went down kind of thing. Uh, okay. All right. You know, it's history. It's history. It's a... Uh, I don't know how factual it is, but I think it's pretty factual because I believe they actually filmed scenes at Auschwitz. Wow. 
So, anyways, yeah, it says uh, countries of origin are United States, United Kingdom, and Poland. It is an A24 film. And the languages that are spoken in the film is German, Polish, and Yiddish. Oh, okay. And yes, right here, filming locations, Auschwitz, concentration camp. Wow. Ugh, dude, that's fucking terrifying, kind of. Kind of give me chills right there. Anyways, okay, well, enough about that. Um, All right. That's for next week's pod. Mike, is there anything else you would like to add, kind sir? Well, I'd just like to remind the audience to note that 363 was the time that Matt complimented my dad joke. So everybody, just remember that. And uh, uh, I don't have any homework or anything for anybody, so I guess we can just tell everybody to catch us on the socials. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter, or X, or no, X formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. And dude, I have complimented you on your dad jokes before, but not at this level. This one was freaking on the money, dude. This one was <laughs> one of your best ones, yeah. All right. Uh, so now that I'm done giving Matt some shit, uh, I will... It's fine. Uh, Bring it. Bring it, boy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, catch us on the socials and uh, catch us on next week's podcast. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Welcome, everyone, to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, episode 53, June 2. Hi, Matt. Did you have time to watch Dune? Mom, I believe it's called Dune Part 2. But Part okay. Two. Okay. And yes, I did have time to do it. I went and saw it on Thursday like I normally do. I did not go on my work trip until Sunday, so that gave me plenty of time. Oh, good. Well, I will say it is a long movie, but well worth the time. Take lots of popcorn, but it's really, really a I thought it was a fabulous movie, and I think everyone should see it in the theater, and if possible, the large screen, because that will really, really be effective, and uh, I just loved it. It was beautiful, and the, oh my goodness, the uh, effects were just amazing. Um I loved, I don't think there was an actor I didn't like. Well, the people that I knew. But anyway, did you like it, Matt? Of course, Mom. But I'm not here because people want to hear from me. I'm here because people want to hear from you. So I guess that means I need to ask questions because you've already ran out of ways to talk about this film. No, so, no. I Mom, um, let's see. So you loved it. You liked the cinematography. What about okay. the story? The story is very interesting. I never read the Dune books, but uh, it's interesting. It is continuation of the first Dune movie. And uh, I just thought that uh, Timothy Chalamet was awesome. He really fit that part. The, um, oh, Zendaya was great in it also, and uh, you will not believe, you have to go see it to see um, Austin Butler. Shocker, but he was awesome also. Uh, the story is very good. It, if you like um, oh, a science fiction, I guess you'd call it science fiction. Yes, Mom, this is very hardcore science fiction. Yes, yes. It, it really, it's intriguing. You keep wanting to watch because you want to understand, well, why are they going here and why are they doing this? I don't want to say stuff to give you it away. You can say whatever you want. I have explained this to you. I have explained it for 53 well, episodes now. It is your podcast. You do what you want, Mom. I don't know how much other different ways I can explain that to you. Well, one thing that got me is uh, Zendaya... Uh, it sort of trains Timothy in how to deal with the desert and different things. And they have this thing that you stick in the sand and it makes a thumping sound. 
And I'm like, well, what is, what's he doing that for? And it's really cool because eventually you find out what he does that for. And it's to act, attract the worms. Oh, it's just so exciting and so fun. I just can't so believe So if you paid attention during the first film, that device is called a thumper. And they oh. use it to draw the sandworms away from themselves as well so that they can walk in the other direction without being eaten by sandworms. Oh, away from themselves. That's now, in this film, they were using it to draw uh, them in so that they could ride the sandworms. Yes, which is so fun and fantastic. You just got to go see that movie. It's just really awesome. Really good. And it leaves you wondering for the next Dune, number three. Uh, Nobody said there's going to be a number three. Well, I hope there is, because there are several situations where you would like to know, like the mother is expecting, and uh, 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 I don't know if I should say that. That's I'm not going to say that, because it's too much of a... a Spoiler. But anyway, there's some things that you just want to know, well, what's going to happen in the future? I don't know. Like you say, it may not happen in the future at all, but I hope it does. Okay. And I, I it was just beautiful, even though I'm not nuts about sand, but it was really beautiful. Oh, and lots of rocks. I admit that one too. Um, but... So you're not nuts about sand, but you live in the desert of Arizona. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, explain. I've lived through my uh, number of sandstorms when I lived in Phoenix as a kid. Yeah. And they kind of burn your eyes and it's kind of yucky to get it in your mouth. But I, it, it was beautiful, still beautiful, made the sand beautiful. You almost want to live there, but not quite. But, you know, and walking in sand is always horrible. If you've ever even tried to walk in the sand on the beach, you know, you take a step and you sink down and in. But they, it was just a great job. And then they had to walk a certain way. And, I mean, it was just an exciting movie. And you guys ought to go see it. You still didn't explain why you live in the desert when you hate sand. Uh, I had no choice. It's where my mom loved. Okay, we- Mom, you are an 81-year-old adult. You have oh. a choice now. Oh, foo. I, I don't live in sand now. We have trees and grass. You live in the sand. desert. You still live in the desert surrounded well, by sorry. dirt and uh, sand. Well, sort of. Our grass is starting to grow back. We actually had rain. Okay, Mom. But, then you but, live in the one town and the one area in the state of Arizona that is lush and flourishing with grass. Well, not that trees. much. <laughs> no, but we planted grass. <laughs> anyway. Not, God, are you drunk? Yes. No, I'm not. I'm not really. Like, if you were drunk, at least I would understand. I'm a nice grandma. I'm so what? Here. Nice grandmas aren't allowed a, a beverage? <laughs> yeah, we are. But I don't think I will. Not really. Not tonight. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what your excuse is. But no excuse. What? Exactly. I live here, my house. That's it, you know. Oh, Lord. But there are lots of trees. There's lots of, some people do have grass. Not a whole lot, but, you know, there's grass. I count mesquite trees, sort of, you know, as they shed. But anyway, oh, this, the, oh, the colors are so beautiful in this movie. Yeah, it, it it's really, and, oh. <gasps> Austin, oh my golly. Can I spoil that about Austin? Mom, it is your podcast. I have already said that well, once. Okay, well, I heard someone on something I was listening to say, watch for Austin, he has no hair. Wow. You hardly recognize him, but he was awesome. Just it was really he was really, really good. Uh mean but good. A good mean, I guess you call it. I like don't think there's much else I can say without, you know, telling people stuff I don't want to tell them. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mom, it is called spoilers, and you're allowed to talk about them if you want to talk it, about it, them. It, I don't it, understand it, why this think? is such a hard concept. What did you think about the worm? I enjoy the sandworms. I think they're hilarious. I do, too. And I thought writing them was just amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yes, it was. Oh, and when you're, oh, I'll go and sit in the middle of the theater. So, so you have the whole expanse. 
it, it's really cool. And there's lots of battles, and that's really great. And, oh, the the spaceships, I guess you call them? Yeah, I suppose, I guess. Those were neat. because What I mean, spaceships? Were they spaceships or something? Well, they well were, if they're in space, they're hey, spaceship. Well, they landed from wherever, and, and here are these little bitty people, and then the great big machine things, and that was really, really cool. Really was. So you have to sit in the middle of the theater if you can do it. Really neat. Anyway, the, that's my opinion of the movie. But I would go. I'd go see it again, even though it was very long. Well, why is it so long then? I mean, yes, it's a three-hour long movie, but why do you keep saying it's so long? Did it drag? Did it feel like it was really long? Like, did you hate it? Uh, uh, no, I didn't hate it. It, it I did get a little, uh, uh, you know, but but it had to be that long because it covered a lot of area because they were in one area and then they went and went to the but other But you keep area. saying it's long. Do you realize the first Dune of this series is only 10 minutes shorter? Is that all? Yes. Oh, well, then what the heck? Go. It's That's fun. why I'm asking you. You said it feels long. I don't know why. It felt a little bit longer to well, me. Well, that's but... why I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. These are well, the things you need to think travel, about. Well, there's travel, and then there's getting to know the different people, the different, um, what do you call them, country? Uh, uh, no, I don't know. I can't remember the name of the people that he goes to, and I wish I could remember. Do you remember? Can you tell me? I mean, I'm pretty sure it was just more Fremen, wasn't it? They were yeah. just different natives to the planet. Yeah, they were different, you know, than the other people. They wanted to be different, I think. They didn't want to be like the other people, I don't believe. But anyway, yes, it was fascinating. And uh, yeah, well, okay, only 10 minutes longer. Well, for heaven's sakes, go and see it. Okay. Well, but mom, you keep saying that it feels long. So explain to you why. I mean, this is what I'm trying to get out of you. I'm trying to get you to think. Well, some of the why? battles. Some of the battles were long. Um, See, was that so hard? No, it wasn't. Final battle was a bit long, and but it needed to be done the way it was done. I'm not quibbling. I think that was fine. But yeah, it was a little long. But uh, still, it needed in there. Really, really good. That's all I can say. End of quote. Okay? Well, I'm just trying to get you to think because you keep saying it's long, but yet the first one was n about the same length and you did not say that was long. Well, no, I you didn't. see what I mean? It's long. Well, anyhow. But it kept your attention and you and you kept wondering, well, how's this? Where are they going and what? how's this going to do? It was good. It was very good. Yeah. And very interesting. Mm -hmm. I liked it very much. So anyway, and I know you loved it, didn't you? Yes, of course. You heard the review on the radio. I, I don't know. Yes, I know. Yeah. So and anyway. Mom, are you feeling okay? Oh, never. <laughs> I'm old. Hey, you know. Yes, I old. know you're old, Mom. You're creaky and old and everything. But anyway, yes. It's really fabulous, and it you know, and I think everyone knows that it's really great now. So they all need to go and see it. There you go. Ma Hincha says. Okay, well, how many cookies out of five do you give Dune Part Two? I give it five. Okay, and well, so and five. So but you know. but you said it was too long. Well, right. not that long, but no, not that long, but it was a little long. But yeah, it was worth it, though. So, okay. But that's a negative. Being too long no, is a care. negative. I'm, I don't care. I'm giving it a five. I'm okay. It a five. Well, no. I just don't understand your rating system. Okay. Nobody can understand me, so what the heck? <laughs> anyway.
Okay. I'm just trying to get you to think and speak critically, Mom. I know it's a difficult thing. Yeah, but I don't really want to criticize it, except, I mean, yeah, like... Okay, so critical does not mean criticize. They're two different words. Oh, okay. Well, you know. But the thing is, those battles needed to be in there, and, and I think everything that was in there needed to be in there. But, you know, it's just... I felt it was a wee bit long, but I'm not going to be grouchy about it. No. Okay? Well, I'm just trying to figure you out because at one side you say it's too long. The other side, I just I just don't understand, Mom. I just don't understand. I guess I oh, never no. will. No, I don't. You think love it, and you give it a perfect score, which means there's <laughs> no complaints. But yet you're sitting here complaining well, about it. Oh, well, poo. If I have to take back. A little bit, but I wouldn't take back much. But four and three quarters? No, that's not a... Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, go see it. You'll love it. And you're younger, so your bones won't be as creaky and stuff. Right? Sure. Why not? Sure. Maybe, Mom, what if they have problems and, you know, they have sports injuries and their bones are creaky and they do hurt? Well, then tough it out, guys. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyway, love you all. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, are you done with your oh, yes. review? Ma, it's done with her review. Yes, I Now, am. what about the movie you're going to talk about next week? Oh, gracious. I don't even know the name of it. Called Zone I of Interest. It. What? The, the what? Zone of Interest. See, if you didn't talk over me, you'd hear what I said, too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Zone of interest. All righty. What you are watch. your thoughts on that? Is, are you excited for it? Are you leery? Like, what is your thoughts? I already watched it, so I can't tell you my thoughts. <laughs> okay. There you go. Then say that. I've already watched it, and I don't want to spoil it yet. No, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I really do not want to spoil it. And But you must be a really fast reader. This is one thing my translator had a little difficulty. It's like, wow, you know, flash that on there, and i got to read faster, you know. But other than that, it's all subtitles, folks. So be prepared, okay? Uh, um, well, then it wouldn't be a translator. It would just be someone reading it for you because they're not translating what's on screen. Oh, no, he's not because he doesn't know German. But, yeah, right, my reader, my reader said, and some of it, he had a little difficulty because the the written part would be over a white part, which would make the words very hard to read. But there wasn't much of that, just a little. Anyway, okay? Well, I hey, mean... Hey, do this. This is... The, but I'm not going to review it now. <sighs> I'm not asking you to review it, Mom. I'm just saying it's not translation it's already translated yeah he's not translating it from german into english he's reading subtitles right so my my reader yes Mm -hmm. yeah so anyways are are we good we're good so i'm never good but that's okay okay well i'm evil are you done can i talk now yes sir i'm just asking mom If you want to continue talking, just keep talking. But I keep trying to talk and you keep interrupting. So what would you like to do? I'm done. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, episode number 53. Next week's Zone of Interest. It is a film not for the faint of heart. It is part of Mike and I's Academy Award Best Picture nominee catch-up. So I think it is an important film to watch. So we will see how it goes. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, and we will chat with you next week. Bye.